Well, welcome, Miss Berlin, to the Lessons of a Lashpreneur Show. How are you doing? Good, and you? Good. All right. So tell the listeners who you are, what your business is, and the details about what specifically you do. So um, I'm Berlin. I have two locations currently right now for sugaring salons located in Southern California. One's in Downey and one is in Anaheim. Um, and I was in the treatment room, but as of the last I think five months with you. I'm not in the treatment room at all. And I'm just running the businesses. Woo -woo! And how yeah. many team members do you have both in service providers and in reception? Um, receptionist. I currently have six service providers. I think we are back up. I'm starting onboarding with a new one today. So I think I'm at 11, 12, 11, 11 or oh. 12 now. So service providers, 20, or 20 yeah, employees. Service providers yes, ma'am. All right, so let's talk about um, <laughs> that fateful day in June when you and I jumped on a call and you were considering joining us inside of our mastermind. And when we first started to dive into some numbers, what was coming up for you as we started to kind of look at the numbers of the business? Um, because you opened up a second location last year after having a very successful first location. So talk to me about starting to get access into the numbers and looking at the numbers from a different lens. Um. I was kind of confused. Like I didn't know anything before I, I thought I knew everything and I didn't know anything. And then um, they kind of just broke it down easier to make it understand. Um, and I realized like where I was at and that I wasn't in as deep of a hole as I thought I was, but I was still in a deep hole. And it kind of helped me to be positive, to be able to like get it going to figure out where to get out of the hole I was in. Yeah. So a lot of what that conversation was, was, um, and, and I see this quite a bit, but it's almost like you have an accountant, but you don't actually know the numbers that the account are doing, or it's hard to access that information. So it kind of, you had an accountant that was, I think a friend. And so you had profit and loss statements and taxes being filed and all of that. But as far as the information you were getting and the data you were getting from the accountant, it actually wasn't helpful for you to know at any given point where the business was at. Is that right? Yeah, I was doing my own profits and losses where I was making more sense to me than the one that they were giving. And then I showed you both and you're like, neither are these are, are correct. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the common tariff phrase, the math ain't mathing on this. Uh, because that is, as far as me being a coach and coming into all these different businesses that we have in our programs, it's hard for me to know how to help you get out of the hole until we know what the actual data is. And that's where we start to look at something like a profit and loss statement, which is the the current picture of the business based on the past. Now, it doesn't mean that's what's going to happen in the future, but if nothing changes, nothing changes. And so when we started working together, um, if you don't mind me sharing, you had done, I think about $600,000 in sales, but we realized that your expenses were around 800,000. And so that's a scary place to be at when we're not, when we're only focusing on sales because sales seemed to be pretty good and growing. And she had two locations. Now she was within like the first six or seven months of the second location. So there was a ton of startup costs, but what kind of share with me how the last four or five months in this program has been as we've started to deep dive into the numbers to start getting them to go in the direction that you wanted them to go. Um, it's helped a lot with being able to understand like if what's a want and a need for the business. Um, so I'm not overspending wants of what I want to bring into the business. Um, and also to what services are most profitable and how to make the service more profitable, being able to actually know how much you're spending per service and per employee and client, um, bringing them in and out and things like that. Um, yeah. Talk to me about um, the team structure and how that's shifted and changed because you had a big team to begin with. Yeah, when I first started with you, I had I had just hired my 20th and then as the last few months have went on, it went down to about 14 employees and it's back up now to 18 or 19, like right yeah. under the 20. Um, but the team dynamic is a lot different. Um, it's girls that are hiring with the strategy of they're there to stay long-term. It's not that they're there just to get a quick buck and leave. Um, they're here as a team more than as just like an individual. What was your uh, hiring process prior to joining the program? Um, we'd meet one time, we'd talk for 20 minutes and I'm like, you're hired or you're not hired. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> now, like, <laughs> yeah, it was bad. Um, it was like, um, now it's, I message them first, see if they're, I have them setting up. I would, uh, before actually I would go on Indeed and I would just post it and um, anybody that applied, I would contact and I'd, do I'd schedule interviews and I get a lot of uh, where I would get no showed for interviews. So I'd be wasting time when I was in the treatment room. So it was taking money from income from the business also. Um, and then 
when I started with you, I started scheduling phone interviews. And then out of those, if they didn't answer, I just didn't waste my time. I was still going and doing stuff at home um, for the business. And then um, after I finished the phone interview, set up the in-person and you choose the ones that you actually liked over the phone. And then, then when the in-person interviews come in, those questions that you have in the question bank, like it changes completely if I would hire them or not. I might vibe with somebody, but we don't have the same values to, for work. Ooh, that's good. So talk to me about that process and how, like the, the, cause how many times have you hired in the last four or five months? I feel like you've just been on a constant hiring. Yeah. Like, I'm like, it's like a never ending cycle, but it's okay. Um, seven I'm or eight out. or nine team members at this point. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's been receptionists and estheticians, obviously receptionists, it's, that's not a career path for them. So this is a different thing, but I'm getting more receptionists that are more responsible than what I was getting before I yeah. was kind of getting whatever was applying and, and if I like their vibe and the way that they answered a few questions but now with the different questions it's a lot different it's people that are responsible and actually know how to handle being in a busy environment and in the beauty industry is always changing and evolving and you have to be ready for that too um and then for recept for estheticians that are um, are sugarists in the salon um it's just been completely different values that we've been looking for and um, uh, some of our team that we did hire beforehand, like they do fit those values and the way that the salon runs. But a lot of the institutions I had before are not even on the team anymore, which is a, is not a bad thing. I'm not. Yeah. yeah it's not like they were bad people. It's just, again, when we're looking at, and this is what we prioritize in all of our programs is really heavily on is team culture. Right. And it's fine to have people that just want to collect a paycheck. Right. But they can collect a paycheck anywhere. In fact, if they're only there to collect a paycheck, chances are they're going to want to make more money on their own. Even though we as business owners know that that's not exactly the case, that it's actually much easier to be an employee, but there aren't many great team cultures um, because of how wrong it's done or how unintentional business owners are, are growing their teams. So talk to me about the cohesiveness of the team or what it's been like for you to build out this team that does fit with the mission, the vision, the values, and having kind of that alignment of everybody rowing in the same direction. How has that changed your leadership and your management? It made it a lot easier for for me to um, like kind of run the ship while the, and the stay the ship afloat, even if we're still building and trying to figure out how to bring in more clients and, and profit and things like that, or not even profit, but sales, I should say, <laughs> like bring in more sales, but um, it's been a lot easier. The girls all vibe a lot better together. So you don't feel like there's ever any tension or anything like that in the salon yeah. um, because they all kind of have the same values and they all, even if they could be from different walks of life, different types of personalities, but they still all coincide together and, and work really well together. And they, um, it's nice to see that they're like actually, um, hanging out outside of work too. Like they're not only just coworkers, like they, they became like a family friends and, and things like that too, to each other. And, um, I, when I walk into the salon, like I never feel like they're like, want to complain about each other or anything like that. Whereas before the girls would come in and be like, well, she did this and this, and it was kind of, it was just everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to play referee to adults and you're like, this is not what I signed up for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk to me about, so we just got done with, so as part of the mastermind, they get a quarterly strategy call. So when we jumped on the call today, um, Berlin has been really focusing on getting a lot of processes in place. Obviously her hiring process is nailed down because she keeps doing it. So a lot of what her growth uh, goals are, are getting her second location up to snap. So her first location, um, I think, Think, do you remember the numbers of what you've done in sales at Downey? We're hitting in like 80 to like the lowest was like 78, I think this year. And yeah. then the highest was like 90. Thousand dollars a month, by the way. That's what that number is. <laughs> so I think you're <laughs> at what? 800, 900,000? 800, 900,000 with that location. Yep. And 24% profit margin. We got to stop and celebrate that for a second. Girl has done about $200,000 in profit at the one location. So that's when we want to maximize one location and maybe have a template for the second one because your goals are to have multiple locations eventually um, beyond just the second one. So she's in about, what, 14 months the second location's been open? We opened last August. Yeah, so this is our, yeah, this is our yeah. 14th month or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so it is still operating a loss because she's having a lot of one-time expenses or new expenses that come in and she's been building out demand for that team. So she's fully staffed at that second location now. And so our whole strategy call was how to grow and increase sales in that second location to get it matching the primary location. So talk to me about what it's like to have a strategy versus how you were running the business prior to joining. It 
takes all the stress away. Well, there's still a little bit of stress, but it doesn't, it doesn't make me feel like I'm with my head, (laughs) with my head cut off. Like I can sit there and like, if I can't sit with it in the moment, it's kind of like you and Victoria say the other, the other coaches in the um, program, but if you can't, you got to sit there with the feelings and like feel it. And like, it's okay to be upset or like stressed for a minute, but then like walk away, get away from it and then come back once your head is clear and like, just keep going with the numbers. Like, don't, don't let it get to you. And then before I literally like, I would cry to my fiance and be like, I can't, like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, what I'm do I, I'm asking him and he's not in the waxing industry. He's a barber, but that's still not the same. Yeah. And then he's, we're running the business together. Like this is, it's just trying to figure it out. And, and now I feel like with the processes that we have, um, I mean, he's watching the Kajabi and the, the replays too. And so then we sit there and we both like put two heads together and figure it out together on like, okay, well, what if we do this marketing strategy or what if we do this to increase sales here? Or what if we run a promo from here to here? Or, um, he's kind of like now the social media, like create content creator, like I'll record the videos, but he's like, I have this great idea for a video. We're going to do this, this, and this. And, and we, yeah, like we just put it in and, and the girls, the girls have gotten busier, even if we're not at our goal yet. Yeah. I love that. And part of what we teach very heavily in these programs is simplifying your marketing. Because a lot of people want to do the new thing and all this stuff. And we really focus in on, well, what's working? Let's just do more of that. So our strategy call really wasn't giving her any new marketing strategies. It was about basically pouring fuel on the fire that's already started. And specifically looking at, because I know you said in the call, I want to get Anaheim. I need to figure out the marketing strategy for Anaheim that's different than Downey. Now, they're not so significantly far apart that there should be a different marketing strategy. It's just we have to specifically isolate what's working really well in Anaheim. So talk to me about how you start to track and understand what marketing is working versus not working. Um, I wasn't even doing that at all before I started with you. Like I had no clue on how to do that. And you, it was literally the simplest thing. You're like, just put it on the form. And I was like, wow, I didn't even think of that. (laughs) Mind (laughs) blown, well worth the time and energy. (laughs) (laughs) I know I was like, this one little thing. Um, And and that has helped a lot. Like I was actually able to see that I was spending way too much on promotion in in one spot where I where I worked in Downey, but it had not it didn't work in Anaheim at all, which was Yelp. And I'm not saying Yelp's a bad thing. It's just it wasn't working for one location. And um, I was able to cut back on expenses there and spend them where you taught me was the better place to spend the ads on to get the girls busier to make them making more money in the salon making more money and things like that yeah because when we we look at um and this is kind of some advanced level strategies that we go into the mastermind but we have certain benchmarks that we want to see your cost of goods sold your operating expense and your profit at and that's what we really start with where we want everybody to be um and so a lot of it is like looking at your expenses through a fine tooth comb really challenging is that a want versus a need like you talked about where do we need to maybe adjust pay structures because your team went through a pay structure change as well um and that will always shift the team dynamic as well when we're adjusting pay structures but what ends up happening is that sometimes you have to let higher price team members go to get in the team members that the business can afford. And that's a hard transition to make, but you're on the other side of that now where now your cost of goods sold where your labor costs live are spot on, even a little bit lower. So now we were able to look at what her goals are, what she, where she wants to be profitability in that second location and start to develop a plan of how to increase sales now that she's leaned out the business. So. I mean, looking at 2024 and where you want the businesses to go, what do you see as like the potential for next year? Oh, I'm thinking like, hopefully by the the middle of next year, like we're, we're starting to have this full structure and like exactly how much we're going to have and be opening the new or location or start looking for a new location, not even doing that, Um, but but also having where I have a bigger team, like the team I have in Downey, the Anaheim team, just as big and making just as much um, income with them and, and them being just as busy as the Downey team Yeah, and um, bringing the team culture bigger there and having more girls together where I can have a team of just women that want to support each other and work together and not put the stress, let, let me have the stress of like the ownership and they just come to work and live life happy while making money. (laughs) I love that. I love that because that's the win, 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 right? It's the win for the team, win for the business, win for the business owner. And that is chef's kiss. I mean, thinking about a third location. So what we kind of look at with her second location is this is the template of what you're creating. So even if you know you're going to take a loss in that first year, open a second location, if you know that the second or third year you produce this much profit, it's like, okay, now we can plug and play that a third time and a fourth time. And we create these processes that create the growth rather than any one individual in it, including you. Wow, I love that. 
I love it. Okay. Um, so let's talk, uh, let's, let's have you give some advice to Berlin of uh, maybe a year ago, right? So she joined the program in June. It's now November at the time of the recording. Talk to me about what advice would you give her a year ago as she's like three months into this new location and whatever mindset you were in then? What would you tell her now? Um, I would say stop overthinking everything and stop trying to analyze it in the perspective that you're analyzing it. Um, you were already following Tara, so why didn't you message her before <laughs> instead of waiting that long? Because <laughs> I was following you for about like eight months before I even messaged you. So I'm like, Aww. you should have just been like, <laughs> you Sorry, I should have reached it. through the DMs. <laughs> I know I'm like I don't know why I didn't and, and once I did it I'm like wow it was that easy to to figure out things with her um but I um just don't be scared and and it's okay you're gonna figure it out eventually um but it's figure out your processes and, and get it done like don't let it don't sit in the problem and mm. and stress yourself out more and overburn yourself by trying to work on everything on your own without asking for help oh so good yeah because the growth of your business is going to cost you time or it's going to cost you money there's no getting around it and what is the one thing we yeah. don't get more of in life? Time. Time. Right. Um, beautiful. I love that. If you had advice to give to somebody who is, let's say they've got multiple team members and it just feels like chaos all the time. Like it's just jumping from fire to fire to fire from where you're at now and how streamlined your business has gotten and how you've been able to grow the team with much more structure. What would be like the one thing that made the biggest shift for your mindset to get away from constantly jumping from fire to fire in that state of chaos? Um, I know it's been said on, if you guys listen to the podcast, you've heard it multiple times, but stuff is not happening to you if it's happening for you. And that's like the one thing I can, yeah, literally like I know, I think Irina said it. I think Danielle said it. Like literally all of us, it's the same quote. And that's one thing that you have to really understand and just sit in the moment and like let your, the, the irritation or the, the anger, like sit and then let it go away and just keep going with the flow and you'll be okay. Yeah. Cause that emotion hijacks you. Right. And it feels like yeah. it's, it has to be solved right now. But generally speaking, when we are reactive to the emotion, we actually end up creating more problems that then we have to jump to solve for those problems, as opposed to letting the emotion kind of go through its cycle. Right. Because it comes up and then it comes down and then solving logically for whatever the problem is at hand. And that's something that we talk about on almost every one of our mastermind calls is like, what is the problem we're solving for rather than the emotion that wants to say everything is going wrong and all the <laughs> things are falling apart and we're failing and I should just quit. It's like, okay, that's the emotion. Let's, let's just address that, calm ourselves down. Then we have to get to work because there's problems to solve for and we need to solve them. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, uh, Berlin, let's just do one last final little Berlin ism. Um, what has changed for you personally? with getting some more structure in your business and having been a part of this program? Where do you think your biggest growth or personal wins have come from? Oh, I have actually got to spend time with my fiance outside of the salon because at first it was like literally only about the salon and we were arguing a lot. And that's personal, but I mean, like it's just being transparent and yeah. upfront with like Real. everybody that's going through it. Everybody, yeah. And, and I know that a lot of girls that are in Eden inside the accelerator or mastermind like we've all talked about that where before this program like there was a burden if you're in a relationship or or like with your family like you don't you're not there you're not you're physically there but you're not mentally there or you're not emotionally there and like this has changed it so much <laughs> oh my gosh that to me is like the biggest win of all yeah yeah it frees you up for bandwidth i mean we this is now the mastermind specifically is a year-long program and the first I'm very transparent when we talk about people joining this. I'm like, the first three months is just sheer chaos. It is just trying to manage the chaos and get structure in place. What generally happens is we have some team turnover because you need to have at least one team member to join this program. So we may have some team turnover and we're getting processes. And like you talked about that hiring process in place to have the right team members. Then that kind of transitions into what management stuff do we have that kind of second, um, second phase, if you will. Once you've gotten through that and you've got like a good team in place and we're starting to scale and grow, that's really where you start to see the emotional regulation come into play. And I think you're right at that point where it's like stuff is going to happen in the business. Problems are you've had two break-ins. You have had people quit, people like leave same day, people no call, no, like you have had the run the gamut. Plus you've had some personal stuff going on, a lot of personal stuff going on, right? But your emotional regulation to just 
know where your time and energy is best spent, which is not always on the business, right? Have the processes that run the business has freed you up to be able to focus more on your personal life, not just in your relationship, but all of the other things. And I'm not going to divulge all that stuff, but girl has had (laughs) some stuff go on personally because look, problems happen in business. They happen in life. And it's your ability to be able to handle those in your emotional regulation, to not let it tank you. That to me has been the the greatest gift. If I can share that with other people, because I've gone through that too. It's like, I have a business that allows me to have a life as well. And that combination. Mm, mm, Love it. (laughs) Well, if you guys are interested in learning more about our Society Accelerator, which teaches you the hiring process and the financial processes that Verlin was talking about, um, or if you have a team member and you're ready to scale to multiple six and seven figures and get yourself out of the treatment room, we have our Momentum Mastermind. You can DM us hashtag hire um, on Instagram, and we're happy to talk to you about either one of the programs or what challenges you're facing in your business. Berlin, thank you so much for coming on. I mean, I'm we're going to keep talking, so I'll see you soon. But thanks so much for joining us today. Have a good one.